Hi everyone, my name is Emily and we're glad you're joining us online today. Here are some things you won't want to forget. We are believing with you for increase in your finances as you continue to give faithfully. We have three main ways that you can continue to give during this time. You can click the Give button on our website, use text to give or simply mail a check to our office. Thank you for helping to advance the Kingdom of God with your generosity. In order to continue to act in wisdom and protect our church family, we are canceling all RLC in-person services and gatherings through July 19th. This includes Sunday services, youth services and gatherings, youth camp, and the men's access hunt. We will continue to have church online every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. on the RLC YouTube channel. If you haven't already, go subscribe today. Continue to trust God with us as we walk through this unprecedented time in our history. We're excited to announce that we're having our next family dinner on August 2nd at 6.30 p.m. Family dinners are a place where you can meet other people in your church family while also enjoying some good food. The cost is $20 per person and free to first time guests. We'll be having chicken fried chicken and chicken fried steak with other great sides. To sign up, just head to the events tab on our website. If you have questions about anything you just heard, feel free to message us on social media or send us an email at help at renewlifechurch.com. Again, thanks for being with us today. Well, good morning, Renew Life Church. So excited to be with you this morning. My name is Cody Sykes. I'm one of the associate pastors here and just excited about the word this morning. I, I just believe that it's a word that when heard um, and if heard with the right ears and the right heart could, could literally change your life forever. I believe that it's already doing some things in me. And, and for, it's, for some time now, the Lord had been speaking to me about something that I believe a large portion of the body of Christ is dealing with. Um, and he's, and he's, he's talking to us in the season about coming up. Every, every, everyone that I've been talking to, they're, they're saying this thing that God is talking to us about coming up. And, and of course, I know we've heard that and he's always speaking that and he's always telling us, you have to come up. But I don't know if we believe that all the way. Um, God always has something better for us than what we're actually experiencing in this moment. Uh, but sometimes we hear that and we just hear it. Hearing is not believing. Um, until it actually takes root inside of us. And so I'm just gonna say it again. God has something amazing in store for you, but he wants you to come up. Um, today, I just, I pray and I hope that um, th this, this message just literally challenges you to the point where you have no choice but to come up in, in the things of God. And so before we go any further, I just wanna pray and just invite the Holy Spirit right where you are, right where we are, um, just to do all the things that he always does. So Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Uh, I just thank you that you are all powerful. I thank you that you know the things that Jesus has said, you know all things and you recall things to us that Jesus has spoke. And so right now I just pray that, that ears are activated, that hearts are activated. I just release your presence into every single home right now that's watching, every screen, every car. I pray that your presence fills every single one of them right now. I just, uh, I thank you that you always have a purpose and you always have a plan. I think that it's no coincidence that we're in this place at this moment hearing this message today. So we just position ourselves and do our best to say yes to you. Our best to say, yes, Jesus, you can have all of me in exchange for all of you. You can, you can speak to me about anything that you want to speak to me about. That is my position, and I pray that that is also the position that is, uh, that is coming from homes, Lord. I just, uh, I break um, just any agreement that we've made at all with the enemy in this season, um, any assignment of the enemy, I just break them off of homes, sickness and disease, I break you off of homes, and I just release just the, the spirit of God. And I think that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So I just believe that freedom is entering homes right now. In Jesus' name, I thank you for being on this message and being on me and in me and within me and also the hearers. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Uh, so yeah, I'm just excited about this morning. Uh, for a few months, um, the Lord's been talking to me about this tension 
uh, there's a tension that's going on in the body of Christ that, that a large portion of us um, are dealing with. And, and that, that tension is this, and this is kind of the way that I heard him say this to me. Uh, he said, why do we expect for our situation or our circumstances to submit to the name of Jesus if we, the prayers using the name of Jesus, aren't even submitted to the name of Jesus ourselves? I know that sounds really challenging. I'm going to say it again. Why do we expect the things in our lives to submit to the name of Jesus when we use it in prayer if we ourselves aren't even submitted to the name of Jesus that we're praying with? And, and it's like, man, that just kind of slammed into me when I heard it. Submission is a giant part of our relationship with Jesus. Even our right to use his name in prayer hinges on our ability to submit to his name. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, it says this. It says, And whatever you do in word and in deed, do all in the name of Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This means that a follower of Jesus, every word that they say and everything that they do should be done in such a way that they have this thought in mind. Is what I'm about to say and what I'm about to do show that I am submitted to Jesus? Is what I'm about to say and what I'm about to do show that I am submitted to Jesus? If you answer that question yes, then you should ask this question following that one. Are my words and are my deeds painting the correct picture of who Jesus actually really is? Submission is a giant part of our relationship with Jesus. See, Jesus wants to be the Lord over everything that we say, over everything that we do, over every single part of our entire life. He wants to be the Lord of it all. And to know that, that that's a challenging thing to grasp because there's a lot of times where we're building our kingdom over here, but we're building the kingdom of God over here. But the two things can't, can't, go, can't coincide because scripture literally says that you can't serve God and mammon. You can't serve two masters. You either love the one and you hate the other. And so one of the scriptures that kind of came to me that, that is kind of just a, a fun one, fun as in challenging, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, starting in verse 19, it says this. He says, do you realize, or don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself. That's kind of scary. You do not belong to yourself for God bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body. You do not belong to yourself for you are bought with a price. If I don't belong to myself, then I belong to God. See, when, when you were enslaved and I was enslaved in sin, God literally put a plan into place and we know this plan and he purchased us with the blood of Jesus. He bought us and purchased us from slavery and then he set us free. Not from slavery, he set us free from slavery but not from himself. We're, we are actually God's own children. We are actually God's own people. He paid. He has payment proof. Jesus on the cross. Jesus resurrected. Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father. That is the proof that we were purchased. So if you're a born-again believer, you aren't your own. He purchased you. Now, I've said this before. Our job is to honor God in everything that we do. Submission the, the level of a man's submission is, is also the level of a man's power. A powerful person is a person that can be completely submitted to Jesus. You know, I started my, my message by saying, uh, wh why do we expect the things that we pray against to submit to the name of Jesus if we aren't actually submitted to it ourselves? You know, I believe that God wants us to pray powerful prayers. God wants you and I to begin to pray powerful prayers. You might be thinking, well, aren't all of my prayers powerful if I'm using the name of Jesus? Uh, because most of us, when we pray, we, we, we pray and then we end our prayers with the words, in the name of Jesus, amen, or in Jesus' name, amen. But I believe that a lack of answered prayer is directly related to a lack of submission to the name that we're using in prayer. In, first, uh, I'm sorry, in Philippians chapter 2, starting in verse 9, it says this, it says, therefore God elevated himself to the highest place of honor and gave him the name above all names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, 
and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So Jesus literally has the name above all names. He has the most powerful name. There, are, there is no other name like the name of Jesus because there's no person, nor will there ever be another person like the person of Jesus. You literally can't separate the two. You can't separate the name of Jesus from Jesus himself. You know, a name is a powerful thing, and when you've been given authority to use a name, it can go a long way for you. I was reminded of a story when I was in oil field sales, and sales is just an interesting thing in general, especially in the oil fields, so competitive. And the market that I was in was just extremely, uh, just it, the market was flooded with the same product that I sold. And so uh, we had a family friend who was a uh, operations manager for a large pressure pumping company that I was wanting to try to get our product in the door with. And so I, I, go, to, uh, I go to their field office and knock on the door and, and the, the guy opens the door and he kind of he kind of peeks his head around the door, and, and there's a guy sitting behind the desk, and he says, uh, what, do you, what do you got? And I said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm selling, and I told him what I'm selling, and uh, he said, oh, we're not interested, and then literally the door just gets slammed in my face. I mean, like, I never even made it across the threshold into this office before I got rejected, and uh, I was like, man, that, that, that wasn't the way I was thinking that was going to go. I, I expected that to go a little differently. I'm a nice guy. I'm likable. They should at least let me in the office. Didn't happen. And I'm sure that they get flooded with people all of the time. And so a couple of days later, I call the family friend of mine that I know that works for this company. And I said, hey, uh, I tried to get in and it uh, didn't really work. And, and he said, all right, here's the deal. This is the guy's number. Tell him that I told you to call him. So now I get to use his name when I get on the phone with this guy that wouldn't let me in his office in the first place. So I make the phone call and I say, hey, uh, my name is Cody. Uh, I came to your office the other day. Um, I got your number from so-and-so and I -so, uh, wanted to see if we can sit down. And uh, he's like, oh, you got my number from, I said the guy's name. And I'm like, yeah, that's who I got your number from. He said, all right, perfect. Yeah, come in the office and we'll, we'll have a chat. So before you know it, uh, I've got a, a contract set in place to sell this company my parts, all because the second time I went, I used the name that I was given an authority to use. So a name is very, very powerful. And a name you, you, don't, you don't get to separate the person from the name. Luke chapter 10, verse 19, a name is powerful. Luke chapter 10, verse 19, it says this, Behold, I give you authority to trample over serpents and scorpions and over all power and all of the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Authority to walk on and over the powers of the enemy has been given to the disciples. A disciple is someone who gets instruction from Jesus, gets instruction from the Lord, and they honor that instruction. They honor Jesus by letting whatever their word and whatever their deed is honor Jesus. They, they allow him to speak into their life, and then what they do after that, it honors whether they just heard it or if they actually took it into a place of belief. That's what a disciple does. A disciple is actually someone who is submitted to the Lord and understands that they are not their own. There's not a battle within a disciple. There's not a battle within a disciple of who is Lord and who isn't Lord. They, they just understand that I was just handed down some information. I was just handed down some instruction. And my job, my responsibility is to respond to the instruction that was given. I think that's one of the most, one of the hardest things for even students in doing student ministry. We see this all the time where a student comes and they're like, man, my parents are being uh, total bummers. They won't let me uh, stay out past 12 and it's summer and they, all of these things, there's always something, you know? And, and I, I try to explain to them, listen, you're not responsible for the decisions that are made above you. You're just responsible for how you respond. What is, it, how do you utilize your ability to respond? And a disciple actually responds to the instruction of the Lord in such a way that there is no wrestle for who's, who has lordship in their life. They just know that it's Jesus. And when I think about a disciple, I think about Paul. Paul is such an interesting person to me. Um, we, know, we know tons about Paul just in scripture. We know tons about his former life and, and just even the fact of when he was named Saul, his first name, um, and just the things that he did and, and how gruesome and how violent he was when it came to Christians and, and how persecuted Christians were because of, of Paul. You know, even when, when Stephen was stoned to death, that was um, put in motion by Saul, 
who was to come, who was to become Paul. But Paul is one of the most interesting disciples to me, and I was just thinking through this in Acts chapter 19. I was thinking about a disciple who is submitted, who is submitted to the point where they're they're walking in an authority that is unlike most of anyone else. And so Acts chapter 19, starting in verse 11, and we're going to go through 16. It says this, it says, Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs and aprons were brought from his body to the sick. And the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, we exorcise you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest who did also. And the evil spirit answered and said, it's never good. It's never good when you're going to address an evil spirit and it answers you. That's not normally a good thing. It says that the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. What an interesting group of scriptures, and I just want to draw a couple of things from this, from this group of scriptures. The first thing is, is that we see that Paul was submitted to the Lord so much that even his garments were sent out to afflicted people, and the afflictions were leaving those people. And, and, and that just speaks to um, someone who is intentionally intimate with Jesus, who is intentionally intimate with the Father. And, and just that, I even spoke this before about just uh, that in that moment, there's, a, there's a, an anointing is actually a smearing. You're getting smeared. It's like the power of God is being ingrained in every fiber of who you are. But this case, not only was it ingrained in every fiber of who Paul was, it was actually in all of his clothing, in his aprons and in his handkerchiefs. And, and he had been so soaking in the presence of God in the secret place that his, his clothing was smeared with, with the presence of God that when it was sent out, the anointing on his clothes were healing people. Some of us just wish we had an anointing at all. And you do, I'm joking, but his clothes are literally anointed to the point where people are getting free and set free from demons and from, from physical uh, illnesses. But we have to understand that that type of intimacy is developed um, in a private place long before it ever goes public. It, it, it's, it's cultivated, it's, if you're gonna use the name of Jesus, you ought to know whose name you're using. You ought to know the person of the name. And that's exactly what Paul did. Paul spent tons and tons of time uh, with Jesus, getting to know how Jesus operated, getting to know Jesus' heart. Yes, he got to spend time with Jesus when Jesus walked the earth, but this is after Jesus' death. I, I highly doubt that Paul was depending uh, upon what he knew of Jesus and the relationship that he had with Jesus when Jesus walked the earth for this moment. I highly doubt that Paul was walking the streets, uh, casting out demons, but he was only using the anointing and the power that he developed when he was hanging out with Jesus while Jesus was still on the earth. That's not the way that this worked at all. He was still cultivating a relationship. He was still submitting to Jesus every chance that he got so much to the point where his clothes were healing people. And the second thing that I wanted to pull from this group of scriptures is your level of submission to the name of Jesus determines how the thing that you're praying for responds to that name. If you think about this, this whole story, notice how the evil spirits, it says that they recognize, said Jesus I know and Paul I know. They recognize, the evil spirit recognized the name of Jesus. It recognized the name of Paul. So darkness recognizes valid authority. Darkness recognizes valid authority. Your situation, if it doesn't line up with the kingdom of God, it recognizes valid authority. You, you pray and you say, in Jesus' name. Your situation heard the name of Jesus. Darkness heard the name of Jesus in this story. It heard uh, the name when it was utilized by these people. But due to their lack of submission, 
to the name of Jesus, the one that they actually even tried to use, the demon overpowered them, stripped them naked, and beat them to the point where they ran. So just because you're using the name of Jesus doesn't mean that your situation is going to submit to the name of Jesus. It hears the name of Jesus, but it all goes back to you have Paul and you have these guys. You have someone who's totally submitted and you have these guys that are just going to try it. They're just going to send out a, a, it's like a, it's like that prayer that you used to throw up when you would walk into a class before you had a test and you're like, Jesus help me. And you would like touch the, we always try to like jump and touch the top of the door frame. That's the kind of prayer that these guys are throwing out. And that's the difference. It's like, it's the difference in your situation, hearing the name and responding to the name. The third thing uh, that, I, that I wanted to pull out of that is that submission leads to power. Due to their lack of submission, they had no power in the situation. So you might be thinking, well, I'm submitted to Jesus. You, you ain't talking to me. I've been submitted to Jesus. I've been, I've been submitted to Jesus longer than you've been alive, Cody. I am submitted, and you are not talking to me. You are talking to somebody else. Well, let's take a look at the rest of Colossians chapter 3. Starting in verse 17, it said this, And whatever you do in word and deed, we've already read this, whatever you do in word and deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. It goes on, Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter towards them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. Bond servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. And whatever you do, do it heartily to the, as unto the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of inheritance. For, your, for you serve the Lord Christ, but he who does wrong will be paid re, will be repaid for what he has done, and there is no partiality. So what am I saying? What I'm saying is don't tell me that you're submitted to Jesus if you purposefully dishonor your husband. Like, don't tell me that you're submitted to Jesus if behind closed doors you're calling your wife names. Like, don't tell me that you're submitted to Jesus if you willfully disrespect your parents. Don't tell me that you're submitted to Jesus if you physically, mentally, or emotionally abuse your kids. Don't tell me you're talking to the wrong person because I'm submitted if you constantly undermine your boss. Don't tell me that you're submitted. I know that that's a challenging thing to hear, but you have to, we have to understand God is calling us to a new place. He's calling us up, and we can either come up or we can get left behind. That sounds really challenging. Yes, you'll still have your salvation, but what I don't want said of me, and I bet it's the same for you, I don't want said of me that God had to find someone else to do the thing that he put me on the earth to do because I was too worried about being the Lord over my own life. That's what I don't want to end up with. And I, I would imagine you're the same. So we have to go back and reevaluate some things. How submitted to Jesus actually am I? I just mentioned these things. I didn't mention the tithe. I didn't mention um, uh, words of knowledge or like what the unctions of the spirit are telling you to do, uh, what, what you do and what you don't do when you see the person on the side of the road who's panhandling uh, that needs some money. I, I'm not talking about any of those things. I'm not talking about the, the nudges of, of God that you just, just fly by because you're not interested. Those all add up to submission as well. I want to close with this. It's time for us to start just pursuing the things of God and actually start pursuing God himself. Like if we're going to come up and if we're going to go into places and take territory um, in the spirit realm, so to speak, that, that God is calling us to, we're going to have to cross over from this place of just going after the things of God and actually start going after God himself. We see in Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 5, it says this, And when you pray, you should not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, he says, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who is in the secret place will reward you openly. 
A person that is concerned with the things of God only and they are concerned with being seen for what they do for God, they are also probably praying powerless prayers because they're actually still the Lord of their life and Jesus isn't. God is once again calling us to a new place. I just want to encourage you to first go and respond to God in this secret place because he says that he's going to reward you openly. He wants to do something for you. He wants to answer your prayers. But if you're praying powerless prayers, I would encourage you to go back and think about your submission to the name that you're using in prayer. And once you submit to the, to the, to the name of Jesus, I guarantee you that your situation is gonna start submitting to the name of Jesus too. Because you can't be submitted to Jesus and heaven not come down. And when heaven comes down, it starts invading every fa fabric, part of the fabric of your life, and prayers start answering. Prayers start getting answered. Things start happening in your life. I want to encourage you, respond in the secret place, and, and, and in due season, you'll reap if you faint not. That's what I got for you today, and I just want to pray before we dismiss. Lord, I thank you. I just thank you for your word. Regardless of how sometimes it feels and, and regardless of how challenging it is, maybe this wasn't, maybe this was, that's not my intention. My intention is, Lord, to, to, to bring you honor and for people to know your heart more, to put people in close proximity to you. I don't care at all if, if the word was provocative or, or challenging or not. I just pray that your heart was shared in such a way that people know that you have something better for them than where they're living right now. I think that you would, you would teach us how to surrender every single day so that you become more Lord and we become less Lord. I just thank you, Father, for, for the blood of Jesus. I pleaded over the people that were listening today and, and the people that are listening later. And I just thank you, Father, for, for healing. I, I just wanted to, to, to throw this out there. I just feel like there's someone listening that's been dealing with a nagging uh, heel injury. I don't know exactly what happened. I don't know if it's your Achilles tendon. Uh, I just felt something this morning in my heel. So I just pray and I just release healing into that heel. I thank you that you're, you're healing all of the ligaments, God. You're healing the, the, the Achilles tendon, all of the muscles around that heel. I thank you that there's full articulation, Lord, uh, even where, where a creative miracle needs to be, be done in that heel and in that leg. I just thank you that where there aren't tendons, they start growing. Where there aren't muscles, they start growing, Lord. I thank you that you're regenerating things in them. I thank you that you're breathing your life on them. I thank you so much for your healing. We release it in the name of Jesus. I just bless these people. Thank you for letting them hear this word. And I thank you that this word goes forth and it, and it performs the thing in their life that it's meant to. We love you, Jesus, and we thank you for all that you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, we love you. We'll see you next week. I'm so thankful that you could join us this morning. You know, the Lord reminded me this week of a vision I had years ago. It was during a really dark season in my life, and I had been praying fervently for about two years that the Lord would free me from my orphan heart. So during this vision, I saw these giant knitting needles, and they began to knit at my feet, and the Father began to name each bone in my body and its purpose as he went from my toes all the way up to my head. In that moment, I was marked for the rest of my life, and I knew that I was free from my orphan heart. Can I tell you that the Father desires to do the exact same with you? That's why Jesus went to the cross, so that you could have access to the Father and sonship through Jesus. If you would like to do that, I would just encourage you to repeat this prayer after me. Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus to the cross. Thank you for the blood that was shed just for me. I choose today to confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life. Thank you that I am now a child in the kingdom of heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, if you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family. We would love to hear about it. Send us an email at salvation at renewlifechurch.com. We love you and we'll see you next week online.